Good morning. <laughs> um, I'm going to attempt to warp my loom before I go to work today. I don't know if I'm actually going to get it done. Um, we'll see. I'm going to try to go really fast. <laughs> So I've already messed up. See, I missed one. So I gotta take these three out. Oh my gosh!
Happy December 1st, everyone! <laughs> it's 6 p.m. It's pitch black outside, which, I mean, it was pitch black outside at 5 p.m., let's be honest, but it's 6 p.m. now. I've finally finished warping the loom, which I took an hour this morning before I left for work, and then probably another hour after getting home to set that up. Um, and then there was walking Marjorie, having dinner. So now I'm sitting down <laughs> to finally start weaving. I'm going to put on some waste yarn for a couple rows first just to even out the strands. And then I'll grab the first color out of my 24 colors to weave this month. I hope you all like my pajama pants. I like to come home and once I'm done going out for the day, put on comfy clothes while hanging around the house. So <laughs> you're going to see some of my comfy clothes. Anyway, um, so I've got fingering white yarn on the loom for the warp. I'm going to put on some just red heart acrylic worsted weight yarn just for a couple rows um, for that waist yarn. I didn't have um, quite as much of the grays and blacks. I did want this scarf to be wider, uh, but I forget how much yarn it really takes to uh, create the warp. So yeah, it's just... Um, I'm just going to do this. I think, oh gosh, you haven't done this in a while. Way out of practice. What are you stuck on? Okay. Yeah, so I'm letting this like hang off the edge here and stuff. This is just to even it out at the end here. So that looks good. Looks like I need to tighten this too. So wonky. Why do I look so wonky? Maybe I'll do one more. Okay, we're just going to go with that, y'all. So here's what I'm seeing on that setup. See how this first strand here is like, that's why I'm saying it looks all wonky. So I put in that fourth strand. It looks like it's evening out pretty well. So I think it'll be okay. Um, I think I'm going to do... Um, yeah, I think I'll do a couple rows here in um, another neutral color just to get um, the ends started here with the actual project. Um, and then I'll get into my first color. Oh my gosh, there's always more to do before you can actually start weaving. Isn't that kind of annoying? Um, but yeah, this warp looks so cool with the different shades of gray and black. I love it so much. I'm excited. Okay, there it is. Beautiful black edging on here. I even did a hem stitch along here so it's all secure. And now I can start in on the actual project. So just to recap what my plans are for this weaving project. Oh my gosh, there's a dog hair tickling my nose. 
<laughs> um, so I'm using scraps of yarn and I've laid them out in order and I'm going to be weaving somewhat of a rainbow in this scarf. So the first color that I'm using is this leftover Patton's Croy, which has uh, pinks and browns in it. So it's a self-striping yarn. Actually, most of the yarns I'm using in this project are self-striping yarns, which should be pretty fun. Uh, so I'm going to get this on the shuttle. That's what this is called, the shuttle. <laughs> and weave a little bit. the first color all done so the plan is for the scarf to be 90 inches long and with 24 colors 90 inches divided by 24 is three and three quarters so that's how much length I have here so I didn't get through the whole uh, mm, it's not a mini skein it's left over but so I still have more left over <laughs> but less, which is good. So, uh, and you get to see some of the striping in here. So I'm pretty excited. So tomorrow I'll do the next color. Good morning. It's December 2nd. I'm drinking coffee out of my come to the dork side mug. Yep. Um, so I did finish my day one weaving yesterday. I did not finish my first gnome clue. It was a really busy day. So I'll finish up the gnome clue today. Um, yeah, uh, we still need to put up Christmas decorations, honestly. I've been extremely slowly transitioning from fall decorations to Christmas. And so I think this weekend will find time to put up lights outside and put up the tree inside and all those things. So you will have that to look forward to in, uh, in this video. Uh, but yeah, I'm drinking coffee and eating my breakfast, which is a salad. <laughs> I just hard boil eggs and throw them on the salad. Um, sometimes I just really want like a filling breakfast and so I'll just fill up on spinach and tomatoes and stuff. But, uh, yeah. Hey, Marjorie. You want to say hi? Here's Marjorie. She loves breakfast salad, don't you? Oh, yeah. <laughs>
So it's 5 p.m. <laughs> on December 2nd. It's dark outside. We just got back from walking Marjorie. Uh, it's a bit chilly out. Actually, I should have worn a, um, a headband. My ears are kind of cold. <laughs> But uh, yeah, so I'm going to sit down and do my weaving for the day. So I put my first color on yesterday successfully. Thank goodness. <laughs> I did warp the loom correctly this time. Mm -hmm. um, which, by the way, I'll put a link in here. Uh, if you want to see me mess up warping a loom the first time I ever used it, uh, it's in one of my craft along videos. So I did learn my lesson. <laughs> But uh, yeah, so today's color is some more uh, Patton's Croy leftover. Uh, this one is another self-striping. Like I said, most of the colors are self-striping. Uh, so this one is gray, brown, red, and blue. So I'm starting at like the red-ish end of the rainbow and moving through that way so uh yeah so i'm gonna add this to the scarf and i'll take a little bit of video and show you what this section looks like There she is. There's color two uh, from basically from this red stripe to this red stripe, which is hilarious. It's mostly gray <laughs> of all the colors, which is hilarious. And I even messed up a little bit. See this right here? Mm-hmm. I don't even care. It's, I mean, you can see it if you're looking for it, but it's just going to be a unique feature, right? <laughs> Uh, and I still have quite a bit left over, which I thought I would use up more yardage in this project, but that's okay. I'm loving how it's coming together so far. So here's color one. Here's color two. Uh, I've got my tape measure, but I don't know that I can do it one-handed. <laughs> uh, each section is three and three-quarter inches long. So... Yeah, I'm pretty happy with it. I'm going to have to roll this back on the bar uh, to make more room for day three. Good morning! It's about 7.30 in the morning on December 3rd and I'm doing some chores in the garden. So I just took out um, our food scraps into the compost. Just when the bin is full or close to full I take it out. Uh, and I stirred the pile, which is super exciting stuff I know. 
<laughs> but uh, yeah, let me take you over to the compost bin. Uh, even though it isn't a very pretty part of gardening, it's a pretty important part of my gardening. So let me take you over there. So here's the compost bin in all her glory. Um, a couple of days ago, actually it might have been in November, <laughs> um, I came out and I took out, I have all these large pieces. I didn't break down properly. By break down, I mean cut down or break into smaller pieces. There's Marjorie. <laughs> uh, uh, and these big long strings of, these are like tomato plants and corn and stuff. Um, it just makes it really hard to turn the pile. Um, so I took these bigger pieces out and I'm going to deal with them later. Uh, in the meantime, they'll slowly break down. Uh, so I've been putting fresh compost in this Rubbermaid container. Uh, I have holes drilled in it and stuff. This was my compost bin when I was renting. Um, well, I filled this. I filled this with food scraps and shredded paper and it was full. So I decided, you know what, I'll take the big pieces out. I'll mix the fresh stuff into the pile. And so it was like down here flat, so maybe a foot high, maybe a foot and a half. Um, and I just stirred it this morning. So I just piled everything up on one side just to make it a little bit taller. And then in a few days, I'll come out and I'll flip it over to the other side and I'll just keep stirring it. And I've got a little thermometer in there. So this morning when I came out, um, it's 36 degrees outside Fahrenheit. The thermometer, when it was all flat, said 60 degrees. So it is warmer in the pile, but still not into the active zone. Um, I'd need it to be at least 80 degrees. So, um, But I just put the thermometer in here, and I just leave it in here. And then when I come out next time, I'll read the temperature before I stir it. So... It'll slowly move and change as the microbes and worms and all the bugs do their thing. So, yep, just hoping that all breaks. I still have some large pieces in there. So you can see these are corn stalks sticking out. Um, my hope is they'll break down <laughs> a little bit faster with all the fresh stuff in there, but we'll see. Happy Friday! <laughs> so one of the perks of working halfway remotely still is that it's Friday morning and I'm at home, which is kind of crazy. But um, yeah, so I finished my chores out in the garden. Uh, Mike and I did some work on one of our gutters. Um, it's quite cold outside. Uh, so I'm back inside now. I just finished um, some things with work. Have to check back in later, but <laughs> I'm going to take a little break and do some weaving. So this is the third color in my homemade advent weaving calendar. I guess, I guess it'd be a calendar, hey? Because uh, once a day. <laughs> um, so this uh, yarn is another self-striping, but this is one that I dyed. So this was my first ever self-striping yarn that I dyed myself. Um, it's inspired by my favorite doctor on Doctor Who, which is Matt Smith. Um, he wears a brown suit with a red bow tie. And yeah, so it's red, a uh, couple shades of brown and white. So this is going to be the third color to go into the scarf.
go. That's today's weaving. So it went from the uh, light brown here up through the white. And you can see I do have some still left over. But uh, yep, that's it. So it's coming together and I really love it. Hey everyone, it's December 4th. It's Saturday and it's about one o'clock in the afternoon. It feels like it's a lot later in the day than it really is, at least to me, because it's been raining all day, <laughs> all morning. Uh, and it, it is just like this in the Pacific Northwest in the wintertime, at least where I live. And yeah, it just feels like it's 5 p.m. when it's 1 p.m. and then when it's 5 p.m. and pitch black it feels like it's 11 o'clock at night. Anyway, <laughs> so I did sleep in just a little bit today. I think one hour I slept in. I'm not good at sleeping in. I usually wake up at 5 a.m. to get ready for work. Today I woke up at 6 a.m. That was kind of nice and I've just been taking it easy around the house. Uh, doing some dishes and I ran to the store for a few things that we needed and just been kind of chilling out taking it easy so I thought excuse me before I get into the weaving I would catch you up on the gnome mystery knit along that I'm doing for advent so uh, these are clues one and two, which were released on December 1st and 2nd. So hopefully uh, this isn't a spoiler for anyone. Uh, the day I'm recording this section of the video is December 4th, and it won't get posted until later. Uh, but if for any chance this uh, these are spoilers and you don't want to see them, skip ahead or mute this section and don't look at the screen whatever. <laughs> it's going to be real short. Um, yeah, so the mystery knit along is provided by Imagined Landscapes, and I will link to the pattern in the description box below in case you are interested. Um, <laughs> So clue, uh, so there are four colors, I should say, and I should show you the four colors I picked out before I get into the knitted bits. Um, so this is, uh, what do I have? These are <laughs> two and then three and four. So <laughs> these are the colors. I'm going with this year. So last year when we did this gnome mystery knit along, different pattern, it's a, it's a different pattern this year, uh, but last year I went with uh, reds and oranges, and this year I thought I'd go with more uh, blues and greens kind of thing. So uh, this is, I should do them in order. So colors one and two, she said, set the tone for the color palette. So these are one and two for, for my colors. Um, this brown is, I think, a Cascade yarn. It has um, silk in it, really soft. Uh, and then this is uh, Merino Nylon. It's one that I dyed. So it's one of my minis that I hand dyed. I've been hanging on to it for a while. I think this is one I called Endor out of my Star Wars mini set. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I just love it. So those are the two, I guess, main colors. I don't know if I can assume main. She said they set the tone. Color three is supposed to be like the pop color. So I went with this green. Uh, this is another one of the minis that I hand dyed. So it's a merino nylon blend. Uh, and this one, what was this one called? Oh my gosh, I should know this. It's the named after the planet with the Ewoks on it. Maybe that's Endor? Shoot. <laughs> this is dumb that I don't know this. I am more of a Star Wars fan than this. I don't know why I can't remember it. Anyway, 
And then uh, color four is for the beard of the gnome. So this is just a solid light gray, um, either nitpicks or cascade. I can't remember. Uh, in the past, I've used a, a nitpicks gray that's just a little bit tonal. This time I thought I'd go with a solid gray. So just to switch things up so that all my gnomes don't have the exact same beard color. <laughs> Let's have a little bit of diversity in my gnome beard colors. Anyway, so those are the colors and I'm really <laughs> excited about them. Um, so clue one here, oh there it is. Clue one, here's the spoiler section. All right, I'm done with the warnings. Clue one was to use the pop color and knit two little eye cords. So I've got the two little eye cords uh, and I've got the ends here. I think we need the ends for attaching later. So, and if not, I can always weave them in later. It's not a big deal, but yep. So I've got two little eye cords here. It's fun to knit up your own hand dyed yarn and see how it works out. So I love it. So that was clue one. That was pretty easy to get done. Um, and then clue two was the beard. And honestly, in the instructions, it said to, um, excuse me, wash and block this. I have not done that yet. <laughs> uh, but there's the nose, the little gnomey nose, and the beard, and it's super cute. And I still have this end here. I think the instructions said to leave uh, one of the ends on for attaching. And it's up near the, perfect, up near the top of the beard. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, but yeah, so I just need to give this a little spritz with the water bottle. Um, maybe stretch it out a little bit and lay it out on a towel. Uh, last year's gnome, which is actually on the shelf behind me. <laughs> Uh, the instructions also said to like give the beard a little bit of a block. I did not do that. On the ones I knit for gifts, I did block them. And they look so much better. Go figure. <laughs> so it is a little bit tough for me because I'm not really sure how to block this. Like, should I be stretching it out like this, like this? not stretching it at all, just kind of leaving it like this, but maybe straightening up the bottom corner. I'm not really sure what to be focusing on with my blocking, so I'll look at the pattern again because I might have just um, overlooked those instructions or missed something, but I'm, pr I'm pretty sure it just says to like wash and block it. Anyway. <laughs> It's adorable, and I think it'd be totally fine without blocking it. My other gnome is totally fine without blocking it. It's just that blocking the beard did give it a more uh, clean and polished look. So if you want your gnome to look like, you know, he just came in from a snowstorm and he's a bit frazzled, then blocking's not needed, right? <laughs> Maybe that's the story I'm telling. <laughs> Anyway, so uh, yeah, there is another clue out to knit, so I do need to get to that. Um, but there is weaving to do first. So the color for today's weaving for December 4th is, they're all leftover yarns from various projects. Uh, today's yarn is Lion Brand Manny Petty. And the colorway is, I think it's mittens. I think it's mittens. Anyway, um, it has reds, yellows, and oranges. So I'm going to be using that part in the weaving. And spoilers, it's got blues and purples on the other part. I'm going to be using this section later in the weaving. Again, I'm going for somewhat of a rainbow aesthetic to the scarf. So I'm starting on the 
red spectrum of the rainbow right now and we're kind of transitioning into the oranges and yellows with this self-striping yarn. So, so far uh, the scarf has all self-striping yarn in it. These first four days are all self-striping. Most of the yarns are self-striping but I think there are a few that are not. There it is, all finished. So from right here with this dark red, all the way up through here is today's color. So it looks like I got most of the dark red and the orange colors from the Manny Petty yarn. Um, I didn't get any of the yellow, looks like it was just about to be. Uh, I was hoping to get some of the yellows in here, but that's okay. We're transitioning here with the orange. So we're moving from the reds into the oranges and yellows, which should be pretty fun. But yeah, it's coming along. I've got um, it wound around once here on the front beam. Got some scrap paper here to help wind in there and just lots and lots of warp back here to go through so we're gonna see a lot of different colors come through in this scarf and I'm pretty excited I'm loving how it looks so far <laughs> 